Um, so on today's Skater webinar, we have a, uh, a neat topic. So behind the scenes of an officials panel. Um, our guest today is Norm Proft. Norm is currently the Skate Canada Competition Services Director. He's the project lead on computer scoring for Skate Canada. Uh, he's an active technical specialist, technical controller, and star one to four judge. And he is also the parent of one of our Skate Ontario competitive skaters. So welcome, Norm. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, Amanda, thanks very much for letting me speak to this group today. I'm really quite excited to be here. And uh, thanks to everybody else that's, uh, that's had the chance to join us today. Awesome. We have a great group of uh, mostly skaters, but we have a combo of skaters and coaches. So it's awesome to see. Wonderful. So uh, with that, I'm just going to quickly share my screen with everybody. So just give me a second while I get that done. Uh, and again, Amanda, uh, just let me know if you are seeing my screen and if you're still able to hear me. I can see your screen and I can hear you. All right. With that, thanks very much. And uh, let's get started. So yeah, as Amanda was saying, we're going to take you a little bit behind the scenes onto an officials panel. Um, I like to call this uh, presentation panel process or what the heck is going on up there anyways. Who are all those people and why do they have all those computers and why are they looking at me? Um, so before we get into the presentation, though, I got a couple quick instructions off the top. Um, we're going to be watching a video at one point. Uh, the video is going to help you see what the officials are seeing in terms of the computers that are in front of them um, and the way they kind of interact with each other. Uh, before we get to that video though, we got to spend a little bit of time helping you understand who those officials are. And while we go through that, I'm going to be asking you some questions to see how well you know who of all, all of our officials are on panel. Okay, so on this first slide here, you're going to see what a typical officials panel looks like. Um, you're going to see a judge, a judge, and then there's a couple additional people next to them. You've got the referee, you've got a data input operator, a technical controller, a technical specialist, an assistant technical specialist, and a video replay operator. And you'll see that little gang of five there in the middle all has headsets on. We've then got another judge, someone called a data specialist, and an announcer. Okay. Um, to all my friends out there that are music players, I'd like to apologize. I forgot to include you on my little panel here, but please understand I think you are just as important to the operation as everybody else. Okay, um, here's where we're going to go through a little bit of Q&A, and Amanda, this is where I'm going to need your help. Um, we're going to go through all of these positions, and I want to see how well everybody understands what they do. Uh, this will be important when we get to the video portion um, by understanding what each official is, is doing up there in a panel, you're going to better understand what you're seeing. So with that, what I would ask is if you think you know the answer to one of my questions, please type it into the chat and Amanda is going to check to see some of the answers. All right, with that, let's try out with the first one, one that everybody knows the name of, but I wonder who can tell me in as few words as possible, what they think the technical specialist does. And if I have any technical specialists here in this group, please refrain from answering. All right, Amanda, have we got anybody coming in so far? Anybody want to take a guess of what a technical specialist does? Nothing yet. We'll give them a few minutes. Uh, people are just settling down, getting their coffee started here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, if you don't get anybody in the next couple seconds, I think I'll start people off by giving them an answer. Anybody so far, Amanda? Yeah, I have one for you. Hey. So great. somebody says, calls all the elements and elements and is the jump, if, and if the jump is clean. So I think we got a future technical specialist there. That's really, really good. Um, so the technical specialist, yeah, they are responsible for identifying the elements and some work on violations. They're really the person in terms of violations that identifies the fall. Um, so congratulations on that one. Now, we're going to come back to this in a second, but the technical specialist actually identifies the element by saying it out loud. That's going to be important later on. Okay, uh, the next one's a tough one. Um, it's the technical controller. Uh, anybody want to take a stab at what the technical controller might be responsible for? And again, if you're a technical controller, please refrain from answering. And I'll admit this one is a little tougher. Got any courageous ones out there, Amanda? Nothing yet. 
Okay, well, you know what? I might just give the answer to this one. And, you know, we're going to speak in the broadest terms throughout this presentation. I have, I have one oh. for you, Norm, if you want it. Yeah, what do we got? <laughs> yeah, they give the levels of the elements. So good try. They're actually going to assist at one point, uh, in some cases, at helping determine the level. Uh, but that's really part of the actual identification of the element itself. But again, that's a really good try. You're kind of in the same area. No, I have actually, another really good one. Oh. I have a good one here for you. They decide if the technical specialist is wrong. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, and actually, they will be involved somewhat in the review process, but effectively, what the technical controller is responsible for is you kind of think about them as the team captain of the technical panel. Um, they're the person that really has to understand the rules associated with well-balanced. And by well-balanced, I mean, well, what's one example? In a singles free program, you have to have an axle type jump. Well, if the skater doesn't include an axle type jump, well, shoot, what are we supposed to do with that? Uh, it's really the technical controller that's responsible for that. And they're also responsible for the process that the whole group of the technical panel uses in interacting with each other. And by helping keep that under control, the, the process is able to proceed very efficiently. I like to think of them kind of as like the, the team captain. All right. So this one might be an easy one because the answer is right there in the name of the position. Uh, the assistant technical specialist, what do you think they might be responsible for? And again, hint, hint, it's right there in the name of the position. Nothing yet. <laughs> if you wanna take on an easy one, this is the one for you. <laughs> We have one, assisting right. with the assisting the technical specialist. So that that's a hundred percent correct. Way to go! I told you that was going to be an easy one. They do provide support to element identification by the technical specialist. And remember, I'm really speaking sort of at the really broad strokes. Uh, each one of these positions does have some additional responsibilities, but these are kind of the big ones. And we're going to talk a little bit later on how they all work together with each other. So good job on that one. Um, the data input operator, anybody want to take a stab at this one? And I'm going to give you a hint on this one. Earlier on, I said the technical specialist identifies the element by saying the name of the element. So what do you think the data input operator would do after that element's been spoken out loud? So I gave you a couple little extra hints there. Okay, we have some answers coming in. Uh, they put it into the computer, input the score for each element, enters the element on the computer, puts the called element into the system. Bingo, we have, that's absolutely correct. And there's a really important reason behind it. Uh, the way the technical panel has been set up, uh, knowing how fast skating happens out there in the ice, we wanna make sure that the technical specialist can keep their eyes on the ice at all times. Um, you, the, uh, there's many different people up there in the panel. They're going to be entering information into computers. They'll be writing information on, on notes of pages, but the technical specialist has no pen and paper in front of them. They have no computer that they're going to be pushing buttons on so they can keep an eye on the ice at all times. And they're also going to have a team around them, supporting them, making sure that the elements are entered as accurately as possible. So good job on that one. Okay, we're back to the easy ones again. A video replay operator. Once again, the, name, the, the purpose is right there in the name. Anybody care to guess what the video replay operator might be responsible for? Replays video as requested. Bingo, and they're also responsible for recording the video as well because nobody records it. You have nothing to go back to. That's absolutely right. So during the review period, and I think everybody in Ontario knows when that review period is happening, you have that great big screen that will lift up on the officials panel so the technical panel can watch your elements again. They're the one that's responsible for playing back those elements and also for recording them. So good job. All right, the referee, and I know we've got some excellent referees on this call, so they are not allowed to answer this one. Anybody care to uh, tell us what the referee might be responsible for? Amanda, I'm sure you're being flooded with answers right now. I've got nothing. <laughs> oh, something to, yes, yes, yes. Makes the call if there's going to be a point deduction, takes care of the skaters and their needs, 
Um, if there's a problem on the ice, you go to the referee. So I think we have, we have a future referee there. Congratulations. Um, so uh, one of the other things they're responsible for is kind of like a team captain for the judge panel. But exactly as you said, uh, there's a lot of the violations uh, that are the referee's responsibility to know what they are and also know how to input the violation into our computer system. I'm hoping there's no skaters on here that know what these violations are because they've taken one. Uh, one example could be if your program goes on a little bit too long. So that's something that the referee would be responsible for. Uh, and yes, any interactions that will happen with the skater on the ice, if there's a need to go to the officials panel, you're right. The referee is your friend uh, in that case. So good job. All right. And our final one for this screen, anybody take, want to take a stab at what the judges are responsible for? What are their main responsibilities? So somebody is saying the points, really uh, close. scoring the elements, giving the GOE points, counting the element and making sure things count. So the, the GOE is absolutely correct. So, you know, when you get your detail sheet at the end of the competition, you know, the one that shows what your elements are, the levels of difficulty, and you'll see all those columns of the judges GOEs and program components. That's right. Those are the judges. So excellent job, everybody. Um, it's important that we sort of talked about what all these people do before we get to this next one here. Holy cow, what's all that you see on the screen? Um, so what I did is to help people understand what the officials are seeing up there in the screen, by uh, using my own desktop computer, I put on there all the different types of screens that officials have in front of them. But now that you know what those officials do, you'll have a better understanding of what you're gonna see on these screens. now. The first one we're going to talk about here, circled in red, we haven't talked about yet. This is a really important one. This is the one that sits in front of the data specialist. Now, we talked about how the data input operator is inputting the elements that the technical specialist is identifying. And we talked about how the judges are responsible for inputting grades of execution on those elements and then program components as well. Well, the data specialist is controlling a computer that actually takes all those scores and calculates them together. They're also responsible for other event management tasks like, well, starting the particular event and then starting a particular skater within that event to make sure the marks are being put against the right skater. And it's all managed through this screen that you're seeing right here. Um, I, I can't say how, I, I can't stress enough how important the position of the data specialist is um, in scoring and calculating competition. All right, now you see this screen over here. Remember we talked about the data input operator, how they would input the elements after the technical specialist has identified them. So if you take a look inside this red circle, upper left-hand corner, you're gonna see the word Axel. Well, if you see a one next to that, all the data input operator has to do is press on that one, and then press on another button called add and boom, there it is. It's an identified element. Next thing you're gonna see up here, well, this is the judge screen. All those little empty yellow boxes, as elements are identified, well, they're gonna show up next to that, those little yellow boxes, and then the judges are gonna be able to put a GOE against it. Down here, we've got a referee screen. Looks a lot like the judge screen because they can act as a judge as well. They also have the violations button where they will enter the violations and they have a little bit of work to do at the end of each skater to finalize the mark submission of all the skaters. Now up here, this is what you're gonna be seeing when the skater skates. And here's where I wanna get into the instructions of what I want everybody to do. While the video is playing, I want you to watch, watch and listen. The first thing you're gonna watch, well, that's the skater skating on this screen. But I'm also gonna want you to watch all the other screens because as the elements are identified, well, you're gonna see the buttons get pushed on these screens and all the data start to show up. The elements are gonna to start to show up. The grades of executions are gonna to start to show up. But I'm also gonna want you to listen. What you're gonna be listening to is the way the technical panel works together as a team, both before the event starts, during the performance, and after the performance, okay? So when we start the video, you're not gonna see any action on the screen for about the first minute. What you are gonna hear 
is how the technical panel will sort of lay the groundwork for an event. Uh, you're gonna hear the technical controller. Remember I said the technical controller was the team captain. They're gonna manage a discussion before the event even starts, helping remind people, what category are we about to see? What are the elements in that category? Also gonna lead a discussion around who's gonna be watching for what within the performance. After that's finished, the performance is gonna go, and again, you're gonna watch the performance and watch the buttons get pushed on the screen. And afterwards, you're gonna to get to listen in on a typical review process as the technical panel makes sure that they are they're getting their calls as accurate as possible. And then after that, I got a little extra bonus for you. Okay, so I want you to settle in, watch this video, enjoy, and I'll come back to you at the end of it. All right, so with that, here we go. Hello, everyone. I'd like to introduce our panel for today. I'm Dale. I'll be the technical controller. Emma is our technical specialist. Nick is our assistant technical specialist. And Julie is our data input operator. This is Senior Men Short Program. Well-balanced program will include the following. Double or triple axle. Any triple or quad as a solo jump. Jump combination. Camel or sit spin with change of foot. Combination spin with required change of foot. A flying spin with basic position different than the change foot solo spin. And a step sequence that must fully utilize the ice. Emma, what would you like the assistant technical specialist and me to assist with? Nick, please identify the eight rotations when executed and also confirm clusters in step sequence. Dale, could you watch for rotation and upper body? Yes, thank you. I have Nicolas Nadeau on screen. First element. Charismatic performer, as you can see. 2016, he was silver at Junior Worlds. He's been plagued by untimely injuries over the past few seasons. Even this year, having to miss a Grand Prix because of his back. Opening with his triple axle. Oh my goodness. Single axle. Review. Next, jump. Now really has to fight. Tough to come on after Steven seeing the standing ovation, hearing the scores, but now quad toe. Quad toe. Review. Next, steps. Step sequence. Right, yes. Agreed. Left, yes. Agreed. Yes, body yes. Step sequence level four. Next, spin. Eight. Change of foot. Sit level four. Next, jump. Final pass, triple loop, and oh, oh. Triple loop, double toe. Next, spin. Flying. Camel level three. Next, spin. Such a tough season for Nicolau Nadeau. Injury, the back injury. Change of foot. Get ready. 
difficult season continues. Combination four level four. four. Seven elements, two for review. First is element one, single axle. I call the first review to invalidate as not for requirements. Julie, please invalidate element one, single axle. Nick, you called review on element two. Reason? To confirm rotation. Julie, please play element two and slow motion on landing, please. I'm good with rotation. Agreed. Thank you. Call stands. Julie, please read back the elements. Single axle invalid, quad toe, step sequence level four, change foot sit spin level four, triple loop double toe, flying camel spin level three, change foot combination spin level four, no falls. Nick, does that align to your notes? Yes. Elements authorized. All right, so this is me again back live. You'll see that the uh, data input operator is finalizing their marks, uh, while at the same time, the judge has finished entering their GOEs. They're now starting to enter their program components. You'll see that in the upper left-hand corner. And once they complete that, you'll see them uh, return to the main screen, and so they could submit their marks. Uh, at the same time, the referee is submitting. The data specialist is finalizing the skater, and there's going to be another final interaction with the referee who also finalizes, and we can proceed to scoring the skater. Now, the little extra bonus here. We're back on the data specialist screen, um, and they are stopping the run of the competition. They're heading over to what's called the reports module. They're going to be generating the detail sheet. I think that everybody here knows what that one is. That's that one-page report card you get after the competition is finished. So we're finding senior men short, we're finding the name of the competitor, hitting skater details, and voila, there's all the marks that were just entered by the panel. Uh, incidentally, when I was putting this together, I actually, um, as everybody saw, this was a performance from the Canadian Tire National Skating Championships. Um, the elements as they are identified here and the GOEs that have been entered in the program components are based on actual marking of that program uh, at that particular competition. All right. So now um, I am going to stop sharing my screen. Give me a second here. So I can now see everybody again. All right, and Amanda, I am okay now. Um, so I can start to uh, monitor the chat feed as I ask my next batch of questions. All right, so I hope everybody enjoyed that. I hope they were able to see that okay. Um, and now we're gonna test to see how closely you were all paying attention. During the step sequence, you would have heard the technical specialist say right cluster yes, and then the ATS, the assistant technical specialist said agreed, and then we heard left yes, and then agreed. Would anybody care to tell me what they think that conversation was about? In other words, what were they watching for? And looking forward to seeing some good answers there in the chat, just like before. I bet you everybody's typing furiously right now. Takes them I'm sure a few that's why we're to warm up usually. There we go. <laughs> Here we go. See? Okay, we got direction of rotation and the required steps in the step sequences. Both of those are good answers. You're kind of hitting around it. We're almost there. Rotation. Ah. We got someone here, Kaylee W. They were looking at the two clusters to see if they had met the requirements for them to count. That's absolutely right. What's also important in this, the the interaction between the two. You'll remember at the beginning, remember I talked about how the technical specialist works as a team. They're really supporting each other. During the discussion at the beginning, you heard the technical specialist ask the assistant technical specialist, help me out with clusters. And that's exactly what you saw in action there. And that happens at competitions all across the country. So, so, so good answer on that one, Kaylee, way to go. There was another one at the end of the step sequence. We're gonna stay with the step sequence here for a bit because I think that's the element in singles at least where you have the greatest example of teamwork on the part of the panel. At the end of the step sequence, the technical controller said, body, yes, rotation, yes. Would anybody care to guess 
what that comment was all about, and what she was talking about. So again, here we got everybody typing away furiously. Amanda, are you excited? I'm excited to see the answers coming through. <laughs> I'm excited. All right, here we go. So to make sure the requirements were made, to make sure the rotation was completed, yeah, yeah. Body, yep. There are two features in the step sequence we're talking about here. One is rotational direction, that for at least a third of the step sequence, you're rotating in one direction, and for at least a third, you're rotating in the other direction. And same with upper body, that there's adequate upper body movement through a certain amount of the step sequence. And again, thinking back to that discussion at the beginning as they were getting their team together, Remember that the technical controller was asked by the technical specialist, can you watch for body and rotation in the step sequence? And you heard the, uh, the, the TC at the end say, yeah, I have both those items. So now the ATF, now the technical specialist is gonna go, okay, so I've got body, got rotation, I've got the clusters, I've got enough turns in the step sequence, it's a level four. And she's comfortable in making her call. So, so good answers there, everybody, excellent, okay. We're gonna move on to the next element right after the step sequence. And this one's gonna be a little tougher. You might've heard the ATS. I'm gonna call it the ATS now. I think we all know that I'm talking about the assistant technical specialist. He said a number out loud partway into that spin. I don't know if anybody caught what number it was and why he would have said that. Ah, Leah, excellent, eight. Anybody care to say why? There we go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we got a pretty good group here. We got a lot of eights flooding in here. Yep. Eight rotations in a position. You, uh, that's Kaylee. Way to go, Elizabeth. All right. Way to go, everybody. Yeah, for sure. And again, let's tie this back to the discussion at the beginning. The technical specialist asked the ATS to help me confirm the eight rotations. And that's why when eight rotations were hit in a specific position, the, uh, the ATS said eight and it allows the TS to take that information and factor it into the call. These, the reason I wanted to highlight these is the importance of teamwork on the part of the technical panel. So you saw how the different screens interact with each other during the video, but you also had an opportunity to hear the way our technical panels will really operate as a team to support each other. So great job, everybody. Okay, um, here's another one. Did anybody happen to see a little yellow line show up on the screen at one point on the data input operator screen. If you saw it, let me know. And also let me know why that line popped up, what it was there for. And I'll give you a hint, that line is only important in certain categories. Mm, I think I might have stumped everybody on this one. Good heavens. I think so. All right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, in certain categories, oh, here we go. Uh, I tell you what, uh, Kaylee's a fast typer here. Uh, to signal that the second half has started and there was a 10% bonus on jumps, way to go. Uh, Amanda, you might want to write down this name. If she isn't already an official, I think we want to send her an invite to the next official training sessions. We will recruit her. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely correct. So in junior and senior singles, um, in the short program, there's a 10% bonus on the last jump that is done in the second half of the program. And in the free program, there's a 10% bonus on the last three jumps that are done in the second half of the program. Uh, as trivia, that was limited to the last three following the last Olympics, uh, thanks to the free program of Zigitova, where all the jumps were in the second half of the program. Uh, so to encourage some balance, uh, the ISU uh, pass some changes to that that limited it to the last three jumps in the second half of the free program. Great job, everybody. Wow, we're getting some great answers here. We're getting into my final question here. This is a tough one. Um, it's a two-part question. Can anybody tell us the name of the skater that we just saw? Right, we got Nick. Nick Nadeau, you betcha. Nicholas, yes, absolutely. Who can tell us the name of the assistant technical specialist? <laughs> there we go. It's the same name. That's absolutely right. So Nick, uh, I have to send a huge shout out to him. He was kind enough to let us use that program for this video. Uh, I think you saw he did have a couple errors. So that's, a, that's guts on his part uh, to let us put that program out there as part of this training. 
Uh, and as part of it, he also joined our officials team. So this could be the first time ever in history that someone has been the skater and the official at the same time. We probably broke a few conflict of interest rules in that one, uh, but a huge shout out to Nick for joining us for putting this presentation together. Um, I think it's important for me to acknowledge at this point, uh, af after I do this, we're gonna open it up for some questions from you guys. Um, but I think it's really important for you all to understand uh, that the volunteers that are on a panel at a competition are exactly that, they're volunteers. They're passionate, I should say we, because I'm also a, a volunteer official. Uh, we do it because we love it. We do it because we love this sport. And it's our chance to stay connected uh, to the sport that we all love so much and, and to be there to support the dreams of all of our skaters. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've had the opportunity to be there on a panel uh, and watch a skater really live out their dreams out there on the ice. It's, it's the best view in the house. What I'm hoping is that some of you through watching this have sort of been bitten by that officiating bug and look forward uh, to reaching out to your section, uh, to maybe starting to attend some officials training seminars. Um, I've been officiating now for 15 years and it's something that I hold near and dear to my heart, uh, doing local competitions all around the Ottawa area. And I hope to see many of you up there on panel as well. Uh, and finally, before we open it up to some questions from you guys, I, I really have to send a shout out to my officials team in putting this video together. Um, the technical controller was actually my mother, who came out to Ontario from British Columbia to watch the World Figure Skating Championships and got to stay here for a couple months uh, under lockdown. So she was the voice of our technical controller. My daughter, Emmanuel Proft, who is as of this year, a senior lady representing Skate Ontario. She was the voice of the technical specialist. Uh, Nick Nado, as I said before, he was the voice of the assistant technical specialist. And my wife, Julie Bro, who is a coach and choreographer here in Skate Ontario, she was the voice of the data input operator. So a huge thank you to all of them in helping put this video together. So with that, um, I would love to be able to open this up. If anybody has any questions for me, uh, feel free to open up your microphone and ask the question uh, verbally. Or if you like, just uh, type it into the chat window. Um, so yeah, um, hoping if, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know and, and fire away. Yeah, well, we did get a shout out from another uh, official there. Uh, Jan, thanks very much letting us know it is, yes, it is a wonderful volunteer job. Uh, I've, I've attended many a competition with Jan. Uh, probably the coldest competition on record uh, was one that her and I had the chance to share. So thanks for that, Jan. Uh, what were the positions on the panel? Did you, oh, sorry, uh, the positions on the panel do I do? Is that what the question is? I think uh, from that's what Carla? The question is. Yeah. Yeah, super. Okay, so yeah, so I am a technical specialist. I'm also a technical controller. Uh, I am trained as a star one to four judge. Uh, I am the biggest baby in the world on star one events. I want to give every single one of those skaters gold on <laughs> everything. There's a big fat cute button that I just keep hitting over and over and over again. Um, I'm actually also a trained data specialist. Those are the individuals that run the scoring uh, computer as well. So those are the, the various positions. I'm also trained as a data input operator and a video replay operator as well. <laughs> By the way, if there are any questions after the presentation, uh, Amanda, would it be okay if people send them to you and feel free to forward them along to me? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. All right, well, it seems like we, we don't have many questions coming through. Uh, we can certainly continue to, to ask them. Um, I'm off, gonna offer my thank you uh, to all of you for attending today's session and, and Amanda and everybody else there at Skate Ontario. Uh, really, thanks for giving me this chance to, to speak to all of your skaters. Uh, um, I've, I've enjoyed giving this presentation and I've really enjoyed giving it today. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Norm, for joining us today. I think the uh, video and all of the information you shared was extremely helpful uh, to our skaters and coaches that are on. Uh, and it's great for them to know that stuff, right? You know, they, they stand there on the ice and like your uh, opening said, they look up and who are all these people? So very informative for them and good information for them to know. Um, I just a few things. Thank you, Norm and family for the informative session. Even as an experienced TS, it's always helpful to review and refresh and see other points of view. That's from Jan. Lots of thank yous coming in, Norm. Hopefully you can see those. 
Uh, yep. Thank you, skaters, for joining us today, and coaches. Hope you guys enjoyed the session. And uh, we will see you in a few weeks for another um, another Skater Spotlight webinar. Thanks, Thanks guys. Everybody. Thanks, Norm. Thanks, everybody. And I look forward to seeing you all in a rink real soon. Very soon, hopefully, yes. Thank you. Right. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.